Hi and welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy. It's a privilege for me to share with you again in this course. And this course is going to be called Equipping for Victory. And who doesn't want to be equipped for victory in the times that we are living in? Just a short note again, there's the contact details. If you're seeing us online somewhere, you need the notes. You want to contact us, there is the contact details. And then also the banking details if you feel the Lord leads you to support us. So Equipping for Victory is a book and it's a workbook. You've got your book and your workbook. And in this book, you're going to be sharing the name of Jesus. We're going to be having lectures on the name of Jesus. We're going to be having le lectures on armor of God. We're going to be having lectures on confession. We're going to be having lectures on believers authority. And we're also going to be having lectures on healing. What a wonderful opportunity for us as a Bible school to actually grow with you. And for me, this is what Bible school is all about. It's about getting to those courses that really change our lives. If we can really take in what's in this work, it's going to change our lives. At the Heartbeat Christian Academy and Passion for Christ Bible School, we have this book, Equipping for Victory 1, and then we also have Equipping for Victory 2. But I want to just encourage you to study the material. You will have your lectures in your book if you have a physical book. So what I normally suggest with the students is read these lectures through uh, a few times. I try to read them sometimes th three to four times before I actually go into the lecture with you. I try and read it myself. And after you've read the lecture, the idea is that you go to your workbook and you then complete the specific questions. Like for instance, here is lecture one. And you then complete the questions pertaining to lecture one. This will force you to then go back to the textbook and to go and then read uh, again and just reiterate what you're learning. The main thing is that if you do that, uh, the knowledge that you learn will be retained. And let me tell you, just working through this now for a few years, I can tell you this curriculum has the capacity to change your life, really change your life. And I'm not trying to blow it up. I'm not trying to sound hyperbole or trying to really make it sound like it's the best thing ever. But let me tell you, it's got the capacity to change your life because you can go and actually apply what you learn here. And uh, especially as it comes uh, to the end where we talk about the name of Jesus, we're going to be having three lectures on that. The first lecture, we're going to be talking just about the, the meaning of the name. And then we're going to be talking about reigning in the name and then walking in the name so if you're ready and you've got your textbook or you've you downloaded your notes let's get into the manual let's first of all just look at the introduction uh, the introduction is always good and, and in the class i always try and have somebody read the introduction but you can read the introduction on your own because in the introduction you normally find some critical information i try and highlight what i feel the holy spirit says to me to highlight uh, it talks about uh, the name and a name in the dictionary, which you know somebody, you know what they do, you know who they are. When you when you describe that name, you know what power is behind that name, what is the identity, those sort of things. But here at the bottom, uh, what for me is sort of the main focus that I focused on when I read this, is the fact that after we are born again, baptized, uh, we have the power of attorney. We are ambassadors to deal with demons, to deal with powers and principalities in that name, that name that is above every name. As you will learn in this lecture now, as we go into it, you will learn more about that. But just think of this. We have this capacity as the church of Jesus Christ. So why are we finding such a lack of power in the church? Now, uh, that's exactly what the second paragraph there says. Many Christian leaders are conceited about the lack of, uh, of New Testament power in the church, in the contemporary church. Without doubt, some of the cause lies in the leadership having lost sight of the biblical potential that is wrapped up in the right use. And, and I want to just emphasize the right use of the name because this is not the kind of name that you use like a magic word. Uh, you know, you're going to use the name now as a magic uh, token and stuff like that. No, no, you use this name understanding what the name means, understanding what the name accomplished, and you get the biblical authority uh, behind that name, and then demons flee, and things start to shift in your life. So what we normally do uh, is we go to the PowerPoint, and there we just talk about the main 
objectives and the session topics. Now, the session topics for the session is going to be uh, where the name comes from. Uh, we're going to talk about how the name came about, where it came from. Then we're going to briefly talk about the authority in the name, uh, the believer's right to use the name. The church uh, has the authority and then backed up by the entire guarded, the application of the name, uh, the use, not misuse for salvation, baptism, um, living and praying and submission. So we're going to just be talking about that. And then the outcome is after completing the session, you should be able to describe the origin of the name of Jesus and the, the use, uh, its authority in all aspects of life and ministry. So this is a practical, I mean, this equipping for victory, this book is practical. We're going to be talking, like I said, about the armor of God. We're going to be talking about the name of Jesus. So these are practical aspects of the Christian faith. Now, the objectives state the origin and the meaning of the name. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the origin of the name uh, to teach the church to take up authority. And I think th this is sort of one of my main objectives as we're getting into this lesson I want to teach the church. I want to talk to you as the church of Jesus Christ and say, let's take up the authority, uh, you know, that is in that name. Because a lot of times we go through life every day and we never use the weapon. So we have that weapon, we have that authority, but we don't use it. And this is what I, I really believe is one of my main objectives. Um, and then to minister in that mighty name, applying it to salvation, prayer, baptism, uh, and uh walk and works and then to confront the enemy using the mighty name of jesus wow it's so awesome for me just to get into this as we go into the manual and we will just go over to uh, lecture one if you uh, going with us in your book you will find lecture one there the meaning of of the name we just covered those session topics and we spoke about the outcomes and the objectives and um, now we're just going to talk about sort of a little intro here uh, what is behind the name? Uh, Jesus has given every believer the right to use his name. Uh, here in John 16, 23, we see we can use it in, in prayer. And uh, I'll never forget, it, 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 there's a little section there that says, not for Jesus' sake. I don't know if you can see it there, but it says, not for Jesus' sake. And I'll never for, forget, as I grew up as a young boy, we used to pray for Jesus' sake. We never prayed in Jesus' name. And it was only after I came to Christ and I got filled with the Holy Spirit that I started hearing people praying in Jesus' name. And I was wondering, what is this in Jesus' name? We used to pray for Jesus' sake, but then in Jesus' name. And then I understood it. Reading those scriptures, you can understand it. John 16, 23, it says, And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give you until now you've asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full and then in verse 26 in that day you will ask in my name and i do not say that my father that i shall pray to the father because the father himself loves you because you have believed that i came from him so he says in that day you will ask in my name these are two confirmation scriptures so we were instructed to ask in the name of Jesus. We were instructed to ask in the name of Jesus. When we pray uh, the, uh, in, in Jesus' name, it's not just a, sort of like a conclusion or a concluding sentence to your prayer. It's actually an instruction that we are following to pray in Jesus' name. And because Jesus overcame the powers and the principalities and made a public spectacle of the devil, that name has the authority. It gives us a dimension of boldness and confidence, especially if we understand what we are doing. Then we've got combat in the name. Jesus spoke and he said, All authority has been given un unto me. And then in Mark 16, there, and he says, Therefore go. And he says, You will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. You will drive out demons in my name. Uh, so we are told that we can have uh, combat we can we can operate in combat and spiritual warfare in that name uh, here's a little sentence that i highlighted a person's name represents his reputation achievement standing in life uh, when we mention a name it immediately brings to mind 
who that person is. And when you say Jesus, I mean, what, what comes to mind? If you know this, the gospel, if you know the story of the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, of the way he lived, of his life, his burial and his resurrection, and uh, how the Father declared he, him as the Son. If you know that, when you hear that name, what comes to mind? I can tell you what comes to mind for the devil when he hears that name. He shakes because he knows that that is the name that is above all other names. Demons tremble. Demons tremble. Okay, so where, where does the name come from? And this is sort of the first section in our work. Uh, there's a scripture here in Hebrews uh, and says, and he has inherited. So this refers to an inherited name, a name that is inherited. And then the second one uh, is uh, bestowed. And there's a scripture that talks about uh, the name was given to him. So here we've got inherited and we've got bestowed. And then we've got conquest. Obviously what Jesus did also secured him this great name so what he did the way he acted the obedience he was obedient unto death he was willing to go to the cross to die and that gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that was a conquest he did that by conquest and uh, that's so awesome just to know where the name comes from and you can read those scriptures as you, you go um, through it, uh, in Ephesians 1.20, it says, He raised him from the dead and seated him and high in the heavens, far above principalities, powers and might and dominion, uh, and every name that is named in this age and also to the age to, uh, to come. So God gave him this name as he raised him from the dead. And he, he had a conquest where he got this name. He conquered the kingdom of darkness. Yet it says in Colossians 2.15, He disarmed the powers and the principalities and He made a public spectacle of them. Now look, it is faith in that name. If you read the scripture, even in John, uh, where the apostles heal this man in the name of Jesus. And we will talk about that just now. It's, it's, it's in the scripture here, but it says, but by in this name, this man was made whole. So we can see that it's that name that can do the impossible. It makes the impossible possible. And then uh, we talk about authority in, in the name. All authority has been given unto me, therefore go. Therefore go. And then um, these signs will follow in Mark 16. As I said earlier on, you can read it there, Mark 16. Uh, these signs will follow in my name. But just notice there, these signs will follow those who believe. So, you know, the, the name of Jesus, as we are talking today and we're having this conversation in this book, Equipping for Victory, and we are talking about the name of Jesus, you know what I'm doing. I'm stirring faith in your heart. Uh, uh, there's a huge portion of the church that's not operating in power, uh, like we said in the introduction. There's a huge portion of the church that uh, doesn't, sort of believe in the name of Jesus, or they believe in Jesus, they believe in what He did at the cross, but they don't know about the authority, or they don't tap into that authority because of the fact that they may, maybe don't believe that. Or they've just become negligent, they don't have faith in it. And this is a critical aspect. These signs will follow those who believe. You have to believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up servants. And if they drink anything deadly, it won't hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Not they might recover. They will recover. Now here it says Jesus is the highest authority in the universe under God the Father. So and His authority covers three worlds, heaven, earth and hell. That is so wonderful to, to know that. Jesus covers heaven, earth, and hell. That name works in every single dimension. Now, this name must be possessed by the church. So, this, ma this name must be possessed by the church. Uh, and this is what I wanted to tell you earlier on. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter said to this man, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. So, Peter knew that he had this. I mean, do you know today, as you're watching this, as, as you're listening to this, as you're seeing this, 
and, and you're participating in this Bible school and this class. Do you know what you have in the name of Jesus? That's why we're here. We're here to tell you that there's power in that name. And it's important that you know that because it has to work by faith. You have to believe in that name. You have to understand what is behind that name. You have to identify with the finished work of the cross and know what Christ did on the cross and how this actually works. And here he says, Peter says, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this man was over 40 years old. He never walked in his entire life. Just imagine that miracle. And later on, uh, Peter tells the Jewish leaders, he says, it's, it's, it's in this name that this man was made, home, made whole. Just think of that. What can we do in our community? What can we do in our churches? What can we do in our workplace if we start applying the name of Jesus to the situations? As we are facing various things, uh, various trials, tribulations, fight. What can we achieve as the church of Jesus Christ as we focus in on that name? Now, we were told to do greater things in His name. Now, Jesus said, because I go to the Father, you do greater works. And what are those things? To heal the sick, to live in victory, um, to, to rely on His protection. Even when we have snakes and we, we have dangerous things, we, we are not going to be uh, afraid of those things because we have the protection of the name of Jesus and to inherit the riches, to occupy, uh, to take possession of what God has for us. You will never have it until you possess it. We are called to possess. We are called to take it in the name of Jesus. That's what we are supposed to do. Then it's backed up by the Godhead. Uh, we, are, we have to be responsible ambassadors. The Second Corinthians 5 tells ambassadors. Now what is an ambassador? Ambassador represents heaven so as the church of jesus christ we are representing heaven and on earth and if you think of heaven there's no sickness there's no disease there's no poverty we have to actually push back the darkness in every area of our lives by utilizing the name of jesus that is what we should do and uh, i mean the church is not always trained to do this we like i say jesus sounds it sounds like a religious slogan but it's not it is a declaration of power that is understood by the powers and the principalities of the air. And if we tap into that power, we will see the miraculous take place like what happened in the book of Acts. As these men and women were moving in the name of Jesus and they were declaring the name of Jesus, mighty signs, miracles and wonders took place as they uttered that name. But the church, as a church, we've lost a lot of that power uh, as we said in the introduction, sometimes because of, of ignorance, uh, you know, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Or sometimes I think it's because we don't really live in that truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And we should step into the truth of the power of the name of Jesus. So the application of the name and, and this, you can read these scriptures, but you know, uh, the application of the name is 3.1 talks about salvation uh, you know uh, there's no other name under heaven by which a man may be saved so and then also we must baptize in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit in uh, matthew 28 so we've got salvation in the name we've got baptism in the name uh, and then we've got walking in the name and uh, this for me also when i read this scripture this was pretty profound because we do so many different things every day. Every day that we live and we go through life, we are busy with all sorts of activities. And when I read the scripture, I thought to myself, does this really mean that I must do everything in Jesus' name? And then I tried to think to myself the past week or so, how many times have I actually used the name of Jesus in, in my life, in my day-to-day -day life? And then I, I was actually shocked because going back to this book made me focus again on this truth and saying, you know what, we've got this name. We've got this power. We can use it, but we don't use it because sometimes we're negligent. We forget to use it all. But then this scripture says we must do all things in the name of Jesus. Do all things in the name of Jesus in Colossians 3.17. 
So for me, uh, it just really reiterated again and, and pushed my focus back to a point where I said, you know what, there's more to this. I actually ended up preaching on this name because for me it was just so profound. Uh, looking at the name, I, I went, I searched for scriptures on it, uh, you know, scriptures about the name of Jesus. And I, and I, and I honestly, I, I went and I preached on it because I was so excited. And what triggered that message was this scripture that says we must do all things. And then I thought to myself, really, all things? Uh, uh, I actually preach in Afrikaans on that. Doen alles in die naam van Jesus. Uh, and, and I knew that when I preached that, it would stir the body of Christ up so that we can actually stand against the works of the enemy. I mean, in, in 1 John 3, 23, and you can read that in your own time, it actually says that, that we have a command to believe in the name of His Son. There's a command to believe, and this is one of the scriptures I found when I did my research. So there's a command to believe in that. As we are commanded to love one another, as we are commanded to love God, we are also commanded to believe in the name of His Son. This for me is so powerful because that means that that. The, it's that belief in that name, because this is what the apostle says in the book of Acts. He says, by belief in this name, by faith in this name, this man is made whole. This man was made whole. So it's this name and what the name is about, what is behind the name that makes us understand it. And that's why also, I mean, if, if you think of the variances of Jesus or Yeshua or, or just in different languages or Joshua, if you're going to the Hebrew, uh, a lot of people get very technical about it and they say, oh, you know what? Um, we have to change all the words. We can't say Jesus is alive. We must say Yeshua is alive because that's the real name. And, uh, uh, and Jesus is, a, is just a transliteration from Yeshua. Or we must say Joshua because that's a real Hebrew name. But you know what? It's not about that. It's not about the phonetics of the name. It's about the power and the authority behind the name. When you say Jesus... And you say that in faith and you say that with a consciousness of what the Son of God did on the cross. It puts you in a different level as far as the manifestation of power is concerned behind that name. And this is what it says here in 1 John 3.23. We, we are commanded to be believe in that name. I mean in, in Philippians 2.10 it says, Every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. And this is what I said earlier, Philippians 2.10. The dimensions is this name works everywhere. This is so powerful. And I really hope as we go through this lecture that this won't just be lip service, but it will be life service. You will move to a point where you will say, I'm now walking in that name in every area of my life. I pray in that name. I take my covenant position in that name. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, in the name you can pray for various things. There's nothing that you cannot pray for, that you cannot uh, talk to the Lord about in that name. So I'm excited about this and about the name. Uh, what is in that name? It's a, it's a threat to the enemy. You can read those scripture. We can give thanks in that name. We are washed and sanctified, justified in that name. We give thanks in that name. We can anoint in that name. I mean, in, in James 5, 14, it says that you must anoint the, the sick in the name of Jesus. So this is so powerful. And as Christians, we have this opportunity to actually just use this name, but we don't. We don't. We get to a point a lot of times where we are not functioning in this name because we, we're not aware of it. We don't think of it. We want to hear about all sorts of things, but we don't understand that as believers, we have the authority. We have the power. We have to take up the authority of Christ and we have to speak to those mountains and take authority over those situations in our lives. And that's what this lecture is about. As we're getting into these lectures, I just pray that the Lord will really open our spiritual eyes, that we will be able to see what God is doing and what God wants to do and that we will truly be equipped for victory in Jesus name. I really trust that this lecture has blessed you and I hope to see you in lecture two as we continue to discuss the name of Jesus 
And I really trust that this is going to change your life forever in Jesus' name. I'll see you in lecture two. God bless.